we get into our deep dive. It's me, Phil Perry, in for Trenny Kazarek. Excuse me, Trenny Casey. That's a throwback on the name. Big time throwback. Old habits die hard. Throwback Phil. here. Mark the Beetle Bertrand, 98.5 The Sports Hub. Beetle, is this it for Bill Belichick? Will we ever see him coach another game now that the Falcons have passed? I think it gets harder a year from now based on the fact that he didn't get an opening and there were seven other openings in addition to the Patriots opening, which obviously he was not going to get. So I, th- I think a year removed, it doesn't become easier, it becomes harder. And so if I had to say, you know, you have to make a prediction on this, he's closer to not having another job than he is having another job again. Because once you get out of it and you're out of it for a period of time and you're now in your 70s, inching toward your mid-70s, I think it becomes harder and harder to get a job. And I think it's just so unpredictable in terms of which jobs will be available at this time next year. Will there be eight openings again next year? I would say that's probably unlikely. I also wonder what his desire will be to get back into the pool, not to coach. He might have it somewhere in the back of his mind, even after this process, I still want to get back in. I still would love to break that record. But to get back into the pool, understanding it's no guarantee that you get a job. Does he feel as though his legacy's taken a bit of a hit here? Is there any level of embarrassment here where you interview twice for the Falcons and everybody knows that usually this guy controls the message to the umpteenth degree, and now everyone knows the Falcons have chosen Raheem Morris instead. Okay, so six teams have filled their head coaching vacancies. Only Jim Harbaugh, would you call established, and he's been out of the NFL for a decade. Raheem Morris has some experience, but hasn't won. Jerron Bale, Dave Canales, Brian Callahan, all rookie head coaches. Meanwhile, Belichick unemployed despite his 333 career wins. And with that, we bring in Patriots legend, former Bill Belichick pupil, James White. (laughs) James, thanks for entering the conversation here. Are you surprised that Bill Belichick has gone through this process, at least with the Falcons? We'll see what lies ahead if there's a mystery team, number two. But are you surprised that he got through this process, two interviews with the Falcons, and he still doesn't have a job? It's not a huge surprise. I thought there would only be about two teams he would actually be interested in coaching. It had to be the right organization, the right roster that can win right away. And obviously he's a coach who's done it a certain way for 20 plus years. He's going to want to have it the same way within that organization. So you never knew of any organization that had a job opening right now was going to be open to him having that type of control. I think his legacy is already hit. It's already set. And no matter what he's done these last two, three seasons, and I know it hasn't had as much success over the last three years, but you, nobody's going to replicate those 20-plus years of success. I feel like that's going to be really tough for any franchise to try and do that. James, when you say you think he would want to be in the right situation, what do you think it was about Atlanta that, in his mind, made that the right situation for him? Well, it's a young football roster. They have a solid and young defense, some good backs there. The biggest piece that's missing in that situation is the quarterback. So I feel like if he would have went to that place, it would have been just a quarterback that he needed in order to take them to the next step. You know the type of discipline, the type of structure that was going to be set there that's been missing from there from the last several seasons after, you know, a certain game that happened, you know, a few years ago. And he'd be the type of guy that can help get them right, which I think Raheem Morris is a great hire. He's a guy who's been in, you know, the – coaching candidate interviews over the last several seasons. So you knew his name would be hot right here. He's going back to a place where he coached. I thought that would have been a perfect fit for Bill to fit right there in Atlanta if they decided to go that direction. James, you're the perfect person to ask, having been in a lot of Bill Belichick locker rooms. But I think a lot of people looking at this from afar, they look at the record lately since Tom Brady, maybe how some of the younger players have panned out here in New England. Even our own Tom Curran the other day said he got a text message from a current player who used to be here saying – boy, if Bill ends up in Atlanta, you might have some guys asking for trades. In your opinion, how well does Bill Belichick relate to the new generation of player that's in the game today in 2024? I think he still relates well. Obviously, you have to you know, bring in a certain type of player to within your organization. Not everybody's going to be willing and able to accept that type of coaching. But trust me, it's, it's not – I'm sure – he coached very differently when he first got to New England versus, you know, when I left New England. You got to adjust to the players that are within your roster, and I think he has. The preparation is going to be there. I, I was there two years ago. The preparation is the same. It's all about, you know, guys buying in, bringing in the right players that you can develop and put them in the right situation to succeed. Over the last few years, it hasn't been that, you know, been that way, especially offensively. Defensively, they've been solid, and that's just been the big issue, which I'm sure from, you know, most people outside looking in is, why isn't the offense going out there scoring points and helping the defense? 
Yeah, I think you're bringing up the point about the last few years. And I wonder, and I'm curious to get your thoughts, is this the league looking at Bill and saying, we're going a little bit younger, we're going a little bit more offensive-minded, although that's not the case with Raheem Morris, but we can't overlook the way the Patriots looked over the last few seasons. Is that catching up with Bill right now? I think so. I mean, everybody's starting to go young. You're seeing, you know, obviously Mayo, youngest coach in the league. A lot of these coaches are under 40 years old. The game's changing. You know, more organizations are trying to be more about, you know, fun and like all this other stuff, which we had fun within our organization when I was playing. It's just a different type of fun. We're going to be coached hard and you're going to win football games and you're going to have fun with your teammates. Everybody's going through the same grind, you know, putting in the work. I think he is still, you know, a very good football coach, no matter whether you're 30 years old, you know, 70 plus years old is which Bill is. As long as you get the buy-in from the players, that's all that matters. And I think it starts by bringing the right type of players within your building. If you don't have those guys and you bring in a bunch of guys that aren't willing to take your coaching, yeah, it's going to be very tough to win football games. It's really interesting. Morris, even though he's a defensive coach, has a lot of links to a great offensive mind in Sean McVay because he worked under McVay, yeah. so he knows a lot of those assistants. <laughs> a really interesting part of the whole equation. Uh, some interesting tweets that we wanted to get to with you here, James. This is from Brett Jukes, who's one of Arthur Blank's executives, works uh, in the operational down there in Atlanta. He was in all of those Falcons coaches' interviews and provided insight from the room. He calls Morris's first interview, quote unquote, electric, and his second interview even better. James, can you picture Bill Belichick walking into a room and being, <laughs> quote unquote, electric? How do you think he presented himself in those situations sitting down with ownership there in Atlanta? It definitely wouldn't be electric. I think <laughs> he's going to let his resume speak for itself. It's just like, look, this is what I've done. You know, I've had this much success where I was. I know the last three years haven't been great, but if you let me do this, 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 you know, I can help this team get to the right direction. I, it definitely wasn't electric. We know he's not, you know, <laughs> he doesn't have the electric personality, but he knows the game of football inside and out. He knows how to tap into players and to unlock their potential. And that's the type of things that he's going to share with any organ, organization or any owner. James, wanted to pivot a little bit here and ask you about the offensive coordinator situation here in New England. Um, you know, they've got a lot of names on the list right now. We're looking at them here. Nick Cayley. Assistant, obviously, with the Rams. Assistant long time here in New England. Was an assistant on staffs that you played for, James. And there's Thomas Brown, another former McVay assistant. Coordinator for the Panthers. Gerard Johnson, quarterback's coach for the Texans. Worked in Minnesota previously. Then you have Tanner Ingstrand, who's coming from the Lions organization. Obviously, they have done a good job offensively there under offensive coordinator Ben Johnson. Does it concern you at all as a Patriots fan still, I'm sure, and Patriots follower from afar, James, that they haven't filled this thing yet? Are you worried that maybe this isn't an attractive enough job to land the offensive coordinator that the Patriots really covet? No, I'm not worried. I think they're taking their time, making sure they find the right guy, trying to figure out what system they're trying to implement. Maybe they're trying to figure out, you know, which rookie that they truly like, even though they're not going to know which guy is going to be there at pick three unless they trade up to number one and decide that way. But you just got to, you know, cross cross your, cross your T's, dot all your I's, just make sure everything's correct, make sure you bring in the right guy. Because obviously this is going to be something that's going to be a big question mark going into the next season, what this offense is going to look like as far as the offensive coordinator, quarterback, the offense as a whole. So you want to bring in the right guy that's going to develop and really build a scheme, you know, not, not only around the quarterback, but offensive line and the whole entire skill groups that's there. I think that's what the most important thing, no matter, you know, what team this this coach is coming from, whether it's Sean McVay or, you know, one of these other, you know, flashy schemes, you still have to build the offense around the guys that are in that organization. So, James, put yourself in Gerard Mayo's shoes. Which style of offense would you want to use for the Patriots? And I know that it's hard to answer because you don't know the personnel, but assuming yeah. you're building this offense, what should they want to be in 2024 and beyond? Well, you got Ramondre Stevenson coming back, so I think it's run, play, action. And that's, that's the thing that Sean McVay does. You're going to get runs, you're going to get play action, easy access throws like Kyle Shanahan. They'll throw bubble screens until you stop it. They'll throw balls across the middle of the field until you stop it. You just – you set the defense up, 
And then when, when they think they got to figure out, then you throw something else at them. So I think that's what it's all about. I know when I was there with Josh McDaniels, that's what we did. We found the defense's weaknesses and we tried to exploit them as much as possible. Or we figure out what they don't do as well. And that's what we're going to try and attack. I think that's what it's all about. You want to attack defense's weaknesses. You can't go into a game just running the same thing you ran all year long. Of course, teams are going to be prepared and ready for that. But at the same time, you got to have the guys, you know, that can go out there and execute your plan be dominant, ro- willing to accept their role, and just execute every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever day you play. James, you mentioned Josh McDaniels. He's available. Should the Patriots be yep. open to bringing him back? Should they bring him back? And can his offense work in today's game? We saw how it worked out there in Vegas when he was there, bumpy to say the least. And I understand you get a great quarterback, it can make everybody look a little bit better. But does his style of offense still work, and should the Patriots want it? I think he's a valid candidate. I mean, you saw what he did with with Mac Jones in his rookie season. You know, maybe if he had him these last two seasons, we probably have different results from Mac Jones. I think his offense still works. It's, like I said, it's all about having the right guys that you can build that system around. You got to have smart, tough, dependable guys. Not everybody is built for that system. Like I said, I've never played within any other system aside from a Josh McDaniel system, so I don't know, you know, anything other than that. But you got to have guys that are bought in, are smart can learn a lot and learn at a high rate because he coaches fast and he coaches hard and not everybody can play in that type of system. Beetle, how excited would you be as a, as a Patriots follower for that fast and hard coaching from Josh McDaniels back with the Patriots offense in 2020? <laughs> I think it would be more of the same. And I like Josh McDaniels yeah. and I've always said, I think Josh McDaniels yeah. is a great offensive coordinator, but if you're going to fire Bill Belichick, which is what I believe happened here, you've got to make some, some pretty significant changes and use it as an opportunity to mix in a lot of new things. And for me, that would mean changing what the team does from an offensive scheme. I I think it's time. This, This feels like the appropriate time. They have to add so much from a talent perspective that if you're going to make a change, this would seem to be that sort of fork in the road where you decide to go in that direction. 